How much would your life change if you knew every single time someone told you a lie? Even if that someone was you. Lies like you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, you can't own a business, and you definitely will never make more than you did in your old corporate job. Get ready to be proactive, passionate, productive, and oh so profitable in a way you've never before experienced by opening your eyes to the big fat lies. Now, here's the host of Big Fat Lies, business coach, shaman and seer, Jennifer Kramer Lewis. Hey guys, oh my goodness, today's topic is so freaking juicy. <laughs> so juicy. Oh, so juicy. I am excited. So before we get started, I just want to say I know there's a ton of stuff for you to be listening to out there. And I'm so grateful that you've taken time out of your day to listen to me today to get this information about what it means to be caught in the lie of I am too old now to affect any change on my financial reality. The deal is you're never too old. You know this intellectually, you know it intellectually, and yet there may be something installed on your operating system, aka a big fat lie, that is just sitting there weighing you down. And so if the, this big fat lie called, I'm too old to get rich, is something that makes you feel strange, it makes you feel like, oh, I might actually have that installed on my operating system, then I'm going to invite you to join me today. I know that I have regular listeners, and so my ask for you guys, if you are one of the first people, like I have over 120, 150 people who listen to my show almost immediately live, I'm going to challenge you to share it with someone today. And don't just like share it. People hate it when you send stuff in Messenger and don't tell them why. I would suggest that you put a little love letter with it and say, hey, I listened to Jennifer's show today. I'm listening to Jennifer's show today. And I was thinking about you. And I wanted you to listen to it. So if you would do that for me, that would be freaking amazing. And also, I wonder if you know that Inspired Choices Network has an app and you can listen to me on the app. You can also make it so that you get pinged on the app as soon as my new episodes are available for listen. Of course, I want you to come live, but I know you have a life. I know you have a family. I know you have a business. And so if it's something that's not available to you to come live to listen or participate in the show, if you're the one of the 120, 150 people who listen to me in the first couple of hours, I am so grateful for you. And I notice that the people who have the most fun with me are referred by people who are already having fun with me, already conscious female business owners who are interested in how the universe works, interested in transformational leadership. And so if you would share that with another one of the cool people that you know, I would be so freaking grateful. So without further ado, let's get into the show. So today, ah, that was it was something like I was working with the owner of Inspired Choices Network, and we sort of got this download that there's a lot of people who are sort of on the cusp of greatness, the cusp of greatness, or maybe they've had, you know, they've had what's considered mainstream greatness, but it's not actually bringing them a whole lot of delight in their life. And so there may be this lie that now that you are of a certain age, now that you're over 40, over 50, over 60, that you have to do something different with your life. You have to calm down. You have to like go walk the dog. You have to, you know, babysit your grandkids or, or whatever it is that's being impelled at you from your family, from your community, from your culture that doesn't actually fit you. So think about that. Does it actually fit you that, you know, there's this impelled point of view that now you are of a certain age that you should be doing something different with your life? Does that feel true for you? And so if it does, then guess what? This show is so for you. 
I am ready to lay the smack down on this big fat lie called you're too old to get rich. Now, why do I talk about money? Well, I have skin in the game on that type of thing. Like I've been working in finance and real estate and mortgages and, and investments pretty much my whole entire life. You know, so when I moved over to coaching and training, it was a natural progression for me to start mentoring people and creating the systems and structures so that they can actually have sustainable, sexy client sourcing systems and really know what to do with that income when it comes in. So then it starts having babies and, you know, eventually you have a tremendous amount of financial freedom. So what happens with my clients quite often is, you know, they'll have a month where they bring in a lot of money and then they'll have a month where they don't. And then they'll have another month where they bring in a lot of money and then they'll have three months where they don't. And so for them, they don't have the systems and structures. They don't have the mindset. They don't have the emotional mastery yet to have that beautiful, sexy, sustainable income. And so why do I want them to have that? Well, here's the thing. You cannot affect change on the planet if you don't have money. You're just spent too much time doing what you need to do to get money in the door. And you've got to get your head up. You've got to be able to start looking around and seeing, oh, okay, where can I use my skills to affect change on the planet? And it's very interesting. I remember watching, and I say this quite a bit, so if you've heard it from me, it bears repeating. I remember watching a, um, a documentary on Yo-Yo Ma, the famous cellist. And Yo-Yo Ma's dad said that it takes three generations of wealth to build a virtuoso or to give the opportunity for someone to be a virtuoso at music or whatever it is that they're doing. And so you do notice that with very, very talented people that quite often they come from affluence. And so if you're the type of person who cares about the next generation, cares about leaving a legacy, cares about making it easier for talent to show up on the planet, like I am, then you're going to want to pay attention to what I say next. It takes three generations of wealth. And so if you are the first generation of people who are doing much more than paying the bills, or, you know, you are finally the first generation of female wealth who is able to crack that six figure income, then it's incumbent on you to use those talents, capacities, and abilities to build a legacy, train people in what it is that you know how to do, quit going feast and famine in your business, get the actual support that you need in order to be able to build those systems and structures. Because here's the thing, people buy systems, they don't buy businesses. And so even if you have a personality based business, you can still sell it if you have the correct systems and structures. So one of the people I wanted to bring your attention to is someone named Ariana Huffington. Do you know who she is? Ariana Huffington of the Huff Post or Huffington Post. She was 55 years old. She had been previously a political correspondent and a writer and obviously well published, but she didn't have her own news media outlet. So she was 55 years old when she started the Huff Post, and she actually sold it for $315 million. $315 million. So what would that be like for you to just get out of your own way and create a freaking empire? Hmm? What would that be like? And so if you followed her, I actually talk about her quite a bit because there's only so far you can go with hustle. There's only so far you can go with hustle. She was famous back in the day before she wrote her sleep solution book. She was famous for like texting her staff, uh, texting people in the middle of the night and then being PO'd that the person didn't get back to her at four o'clock in the morning or whatever it was that she was texting them. And so, yeah, 
one of the things that I am really, really concerned about is female business owner owners and overgiving and burnout. That's one of the things that I'm really, really concerned about is as we head into our 50s, I'm going to be turning 50 this year. And it's really, really important to make sure that this classic vehicle gets taken care of. You guys do realize that the more you take care of yourself, the more you show up and shine, the more people can notice you and want to do business with you or whatever it is that you do. It's really, really important that you show up and shine. And so if you have this point of view that you're too old to show up and shine, well, then we're going to have to dump it. It's a stupid point of view. <laughs> like intellectually, you probably get it. It's a dumb point of view. It's very heavy. Like, does it make you feel excited to call yourself too old? Or you're like, oh yeah, I'm too old. You know, like even if you joke about it, um, language has frequency. Language has frequency. And so even if you're joking, if you're like, I'm an old lady, or I'm getting old, or I'm too old for this, or do you know what I mean? That frequency, your body can tell the difference, cannot tell the difference between sarcasm or irony and the actual truth. Did you guys know that the frequency of like self-deprecating humor doesn't actually work? It shows up in your auric field. It shows up in your cells. So if that's something you've been saying lately is, you know, even to yourself, like, I wonder what we can do differently. I wonder what we can invite differently for you in the next hour. I wonder. So one of the things that I know we're going to end up talking about is a home life and work life balance and how to actually take care of yourself so you have the energy to be able to do what it is that you're here to be and do. Because there's so many things that you can be distracted by. So many lies that can be coming across your energy system or just like showing up in your head off the psychic Wi-Fi about women your age. Women your age don't start a new business. Women your age don't, you know, go out on their own. Women your age don't do this or that. Well, really? Are we going to like go there? <laughs> Did you guys know like Vera Wang, the famous wedding dress designer and gown designer, Vera Wang was actually an Olympic level figure skater. And so she didn't start her wedding dress empire, her gown empire, until she was 40 years old. And look at her now. She's just like, everybody wants a Vera Wang wedding gown. And so that's not a practical industry to go into. You're like, oh, I think I'm just going to make wedding gowns for a living. I'm, You know, like people need wedding gowns every week. <laughs> They do, actually. It's interesting. Even if you're not Jennifer Lopez, people do love gowns. And so what if you gave yourself permission to do something completely not practical, something that women your age would never do? If it's in your talent stream, if it's written on your life's purpose, which we can find inside your human design, I can access it and show it to you. And, you know, my psychic skills read the level of truth for people. If it feels true for me, I'm going to let you know. And yeah, like there's so many people like Betty White, sassy, sassy Betty White, you know, she's been in show business her whole entire life, but her business really, really took off after age 50 when she got a regular gig on the Mary Tyler Moore show way back in the 70s. And so, and it was very interesting. There was a lot of sexual energy in her character on that show. She was very sassy, very sexy, and she was over 50. So it may be that you have a point of view that, you know, mm, 
Um, I'm over 50 now. I should probably dim those lights. And so we're going to be talking about that after the break. What points of view that you have about being your age that are dimming your lights, stopping you from showing up as the bright, shining beacon that you really could be showing up as. And even if you're doing well in your business, what would it be like to be doing so freaking well that it's undeniable? So I'm going to invite you to join me after the break when we start talking about this undeniable truth of you now that you are a woman of a certain age. So we'll see you after the break. Have you ever said to yourself, I knew I shouldn't do that. How did that feel? What did you make that mean about you? Business coach, shaman and seer, Jennifer Kramer Lewis stands for you being deliciously ambitious, passionately productive, oh so profitable, and creating a life that is truly delightful in every area. Tune in to Big Fat Lies every Friday at 1 p.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Mountain, 3 p.m. Central, and 4 p.m. Eastern on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com to open your eyes to the big fat lies that are keeping business owners from being the bright shining beacons they came here to be. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is Big Fat Lies with business coach, shaman and seer, Jennifer Kramer Lewis. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com or send a question or comment to Jennifer at jennifercramerlewis.com. We are back. Oh my goodness. So before the break, I was giving you guys the total smackdown on why it's super important right now at this age for you to step into the full power of who you came here to be and what you came here to do. And it's very interesting. I was talking about Betty White. You know, Betty White, she's so sassy. She's so sexy. She's so switched on. And so, yes, she has been in show business her whole entire life. And, you know, sort of the zenith of her fame happened after the age of 50. She was 51 when she got her role on the Mary Tyler Moore show. And uh, depending, I, I barely remember the Mary Tyler Moore show and I turned 50 this year. And uh, so, but it's worth having a look at, like, how did she show up and what made her... Uh, so famous at that time. And one of the things that, you know, I notice that is changing, but it needs to keep changing is this interesting paradigm that shows up when people um, turn a certain age, they kind of like stop enjoying being beautiful they stop enjoying being magnetic they stop enjoying creating and they kind of like settle down <laughs> well I'm not here to settle down and I wonder if you're here to settle down I wonder if like the idea of settling down is exciting to you or if it sounds like a life sentence and for me it's so interesting to know all of this uh, human design stuff has been so, so helpful to me. I've never been the type of person who wanted to settle down, who wanted to just like, I don't know, garden. <laughs> like, no, I actually want to just go get on a plane and go visit my friend in England and, you know, go visit my friend in Australia and, 
you know, go somewhere new, go somewhere exciting. That's me. I want something new and I want something exciting all the time. And so one of the cool things is when you have a business that facilitates that for you, like what is it that your inner child wants out of life? And can you create a business that feeds that inner child? And so my inner child loves adventure. And it's actually when the adventure happens, there's this frequency called bounteousness. And it's so funny. I've seen it a lot of times. Like when I go overseas to facilitate or I go and get on a plane and have so much freaking fun, what happens is people come into my business. They're like, oh my God, whatever you're doing, I'll have it. I'll have it. And uh, I wonder what that's like for you. Like, what is that frequency that, you know, in the very, very core of your heart, what needs to be fed no matter what age you are? And are you doing it? Are you giving that frequency a regular meal? (laughs) Or is it starving? starving because think about it like not only are we supposed to like calm down and like cut our hair and you know quit showing up and being glamorous or whatever it is which a lot of you who are my clients will never do but you're aware of it you're aware of it you're like oh well maybe I should quit asking for so much maybe now that I'm this age I should be grateful, but not from a place and space of like, I don't know, it's just not generative. It's interesting. Right now we're going into um, uh, the frequency of gate 27 in the gene keys, which is called the nourisher. The nourisher is right now. And so I'm thinking, I want to talk to you guys about what it's like to nourish the inner child inside of you. Like, what is it that, you know, you're denying yourself, you know, like right now because of COVID? Oh my God. I'm like, I, I haven't been on any trips. I haven't like gone on any international flights and I just, you know, the amount of freedom that my body needs to have on a regular basis is huge. It's really important. You know, like I need a lot of freedom. And so what is it that you need? Is it freedom? And are you giving it to yourself? How much freedom are you giving yourself? And it's so funny, like this, I'm too old, or I'm, you know, women of my age, or like, God, it's just, it's so frustrating. It almost like I don't even have words for it. It's just I need you to know that women our age are here to impact and lead. That's what we're here to do. You know, I mean, we've like passed our childbearing years and, you know, unless you decided at 50 years of age that you're going to be a mom now, um, great, good for you. Uh, But ideally, you are in a place and space where you're ability to impact and lead is heading towards its zenith, you know, like it's just time to like bust through that glass ceiling and bring in, you know, five, six, seven figure months. You're here to do that. You can have it. And here's the thing, when you give yourself permission to not believe the lie And to really step into the place and space of knowing that at this age, you are here to make an impact and to lead. Just think about it. How much authority does a woman of a certain age have? Like, don't you think about that? You're like, oh man, she's a fucking boss. And you're here. You have the ability to step into this boss phase of your life. Now that your kids are grown, now that your responsibilities have changed, if you don't do it, who's going to? 
You guys get that, right? If you don't do it, your role isn't fulfilled on this planet. There's like a hole in the cosmos and it's the same shape as you. And so if you don't show up, we can't actually rely on the other badass boss bitches to fill in our role. And so, you know, when you think about like the competition, oh, well, that person does what I do. No, they don't. <laughs> Not even fucking close. So when you step into the full majesty of you, there's nobody who can do what you do. And, you know, of course, there's the mindset piece. Do you actually feel like you have the authority to be a boss bitch and at what it is that you're great at? Do you feel like it? And, you know, like really brutal honesty is required because in most cases, you know, these years that we've spent not being at the full zenith of our power there are timelines attached to that. Do you guys get that? There's the, these dozens and dozens of timelines that are running through your life at the same time. And so, you know, the best way to explain it is like when you have a quantum leap, you're like, oh, well, you know, on Tuesday, there was no way that I could do that. I just didn't have the information that I needed to be able to do that thing and then you go to bed and then you wake up on Wednesday and you're like oh I know exactly what I need to do to get there I know exactly who I need to hire I know exactly where I need to go I need know exactly where I'm going so something happened between Tuesday and Wednesday and it's called you picked up a different timeline and you fucking got on it and so it's really really important for you if you're listening it's available to you. You know, you will have something Ariana Huffington size that you can do and be that may result in you being able to sell your company for hundreds of millions of dollars. But you need to have the support. You need to have the support. Because here's the thing, the timelines that you don't jump on the ones that you don't jump on still are affecting your life. You need to be quite far ahead on the timelines before they stop affecting your life. And so you may have noticed that you're like, oh, I got so far ahead on Wednesday. I just like I knew everything that I needed to know in order to be able to move ahead on that thing that I want to move ahead on. And then you go to bed on Wednesday night and you wake up on Thursday and you're like, wow what the fuck happened? I'm way back in Tuesday again. And it's because you didn't make the correct choices because you didn't have the protocol to be able to do that. And now you're back on Tuesday. Well, shit. <laughs> well, shit. Because we've all done that, right? You can probably think of a specific instance where there was a day in the week where you knew everything that you needed to do to move ahead and you went as fast as you could or maybe there was a part of you who was like you know writing it down but didn't believe that you actually had the information or the correct information to be able to move ahead and so these timelines do you guys know about these timelines is this something you're very curious about so wherever you're listening I would love for you to ask me any questions about the timelines. I do monitor all of these amazing places. My team puts these videos and recordings. I'm just so grateful for my team at Inspired Choices Network. And like, I wonder what questions that you have, because it's really, really, really time for you to come up with the thing that you know that you're here to be and do. And you're probably already doing it, but there's so many different places and spaces where the freedom has been taken away by the big fat lies that's been taken away by who you think you need to be for people. Like your family, your kids, your spouse, your friends, your community, your identity. And you may have to give up a lot of your identity to be able to choose this new timeline where you get to be you. Do you guys get that? There's an identity that's you, but there's also an identity that other people identify you as. 
And do you want to be that person? Does that actually feel good to you? Is that a future you want to stick around for? Is that a lie that you want to pay attention to? And so I see that we are ready for another break. I'm going to invite you to join me after the break. And we're going to talk about what positive changes that you're refusing that would allow you to step onto that new timeline where no matter how old you are, you can be like, oh, you'd be like Ray Kroc and like develop like the McDonald's empire. He did that after age 50. <laughs> so amazing. So I will see you after the break. This is Jennifer Kramer Lewis. You are listening to Big Fat Lies on Inspired Choices Network. Have you ever said to yourself, I knew I shouldn't do that? How did that feel? What did you make that mean about you? Business coach, shaman and seer, Jennifer Kramer Lewis stands for you being deliciously ambitious, passionately productive, oh so profitable, and creating a life that is truly delightful in every area. Tune in to Big Fat Lies every Friday at 1 p.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Mountain, 3 p.m. Central, and 4 p.m. Eastern on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com to open your eyes to the big fat lies that are keeping business owners from being the bright shining beacons they came here to be. This is Big Fat Lies with business coach, shaman and seer, Jennifer Kramer Lewis. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com or send a question or comment to jennifer at jennifercramerlewis.com. Oh my goodness. Can you believe it? The show is half over. It's been amazing. <laughs> amazing. Oh, I knew I was going to have fun today. So did you know that the founder of Zipcar, do you remember when Zipcar came on the scene? It's like these, it's like a car rental company, but they have the cars all the way around the city. So you can basically just like go up to a car and, you know, punch in a code and just like take a car. The founder of Zipcar was 42 years old when she developed Zipcar. And so what do you know that needs to be created on the planet? Like, what do you know? Because you're going to have your own specific knowing. And it's valuable. Like, do you guys get that? Your own specific knowing, your own specific set of circumstances is valuable. Like, it's priceless. Like, nobody could actually put a dollar value on it. So when you have the systems and structures, you know exactly what it is that you're selling then what you can do is people will throw money at you. They'll try to buy it from you. Like think about all of these amazing things that people have created that are worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Like, um, like this isn't a specific example for the show, but you don't have to be, you know, like a 20 year old Kylie Jenner to sell your company or half of your company for a giant amount of money. You know, when we step into being the authority in our space, being the number one person in what it is that you be and do on the planet, then what can happen is it's easier. Like it's easier for someone your age than it is for someone Kylie's age to quantify the experience. You know, we're even as much as we want to be in a 5D universe where we can just like genie blink, we can snap our fingers and, and change happens, opportunities happen, life happens, magic happens. There's still quite a few people who are living in the 3D reality and they're looking for what appears to be expertise. And so when you have the years on the calendar, quite often people feel safer with you. People feel like you can help them because you have the experience. And so even if you don't think you do, you do. <laughs> just do. 
<laughs> oh my goodness. I love it. I absolutely love it. Uh, one of my favorite actors in the whole world, Samuel L. Jackson, was 43 years old. 43 years old before he had his breakout role in Spike Lee's Jungle Fever. And like, what is it? What is your breakout role? Like you may have had a level of success in your business. You may have had these months where you brought in, you know, $25,000 or more. And there may be a level of sort of dissatisfaction in what it is that you're being and doing. You're like, okay, cool. Is this actually what's going to work for me? So if you're asking yourself questions like that, is this actually going to work for me? It might be really cool to go into your chart and find out, is this actually what's going to work for you? You know, because it's interesting. If we look at your business culture, uh, it, it's written on your chart. <laughs> it's interesting. We do have a, a promotion on Inspired Choices Network right now. If you download the app, you can win a bunch of prizes. And one of the prizes is a business brilliance exploration with me and one of the things that we look at is your business culture and so unless you are a line one in your business culture you require way more than you in order to be able to have a successful business and in most cases you do even as an entrepreneur you're still hiring contractors you're still hiring specific talent outside of your genius lane and so I wonder, like thinking about the positive change that's available for you, like what do you need to get rid of in order to be able to have you at your highest frequency? Like I wonder, you know, one of the things that I've been talking about right now is emotional mastery. And um, we have been talking about quite a bit about divine feminine rage. You're like, oh my God, I'm not allowed to be mad. I, I have to be a lady. I have to be a grown up. I have to be mature about this. No, you don't. No, you don't. I wonder what would happen if you gave yourself permission to get fucking mad. You're like, and really, really start to champion yourself in your life. Like, what would that look like? You know, women of a certain age are supposed to behave themselves, aren't they? What would it be like to be like a judgeable offense? Oh my God, she's so rich. What would that be like to have somebody judge you for having too much money, for being so rich? Or maybe like, it's interesting, this is in my chart. People are like, oh, well, she just shows up. You know, she must be a trophy wife. You know, like, why does she have what she has? And they're suspicious. So wouldn't it be fun for you to have people be suspicious of you, that you have too much money, you have too much fun, you have too much fun? Wouldn't that be funny? Like, would you allow people to judge you for having too much fun and too much money? Because here's the thing, if you don't duck it, if you're like, yeah, I do have too much money and I do have too much fun. And I give myself permission to have more of it than a lot of people. Then what happens is, one, you show up on people's radars. And two, you can be an authority in your field faster if you're willing to be that visible that people start to judge you. Now, here's one of the things that always happens is when women do well, trolls come. They just come. And so if you're trying to like be nice about the amount of money that you have, or you're trying to like be nice about the amount of privilege that you have, or the amount of, you know, badass boss bitchedness that you have, then it can't happen. It can't come for you. It can't be like, oh, well, I'm going to show up, but she's like toe dipping on the amount of privilege that she has because she doesn't want to piss people off. Well, here's the thing. When you do have privilege, you will piss people off. You will. And, you know, so it's not something to be avoided. It's something to, you need to like run 
at the amount of privilege that you have. You need to run at the amount of money that you can have in this lifetime, especially as a woman especially as a woman, because the more privileged people like I have, the more I have it in my bank. I have a privilege bank. I can share it with people who are looking for more privilege, more money, more authority, more badass boss bitchiness. That's the thing. I have the bank and I get to choose who I work with, who I share this privilege with. And that's the thing. If you don't run at it, nobody's going to get it because your own brand is what you're getting. Do you know what I mean? Like I said earlier, there's a you-sized hole in the universe. And if you don't show up for it, and if you don't run at it and claim it, then it just sits there. It's unclaimed privilege. It's unclaimed wealth. And it's so funny. Like I see people... It's so funny. There's another lady that, uh, that I super love. And she was talking about this this week as well. She was talking about how frustrating it is for her, you know, when people don't claim the money that they came here to have, because, you know, you hear me say this over and over, you guys, when women do well, women do well, you know, like when I do well, I have a housekeeper, I get my nails done, I get my eyelashes done, I get my hair done, you know, I buy more, I consume more, I have more fun, I go places and share my talent more, I can hire more team, and all of those people, most of them, I would say 90% of my team are women, and so when I do well, women do well. And so think about that for yourself. Like, what are you denying yourself because you're not having sustainable, sexy income? Because that's the thing. It's so fun to be able to take really great care of yourself. It's fun. And so if you're not doing it, I would recommend that you just do it. (laughs) Take care of yourself, especially at this age, you know, because like I see it around me. You know, when you start to get around age 50, you know, people who beat the shit out of their body during their 20s and their 30s are starting to feel the time effect of that at 50. And so, you know, like there's this, uh, I think it was the Dalai Lama that said this, um, that people spend all of their youth in pursuit of money. And then when they get to a certain age, they spend all of their money in pursuit of youth. And it's crazy. Like you look at the actual numbers, people spend a lot of freaking money in their last few years of their life, or even the last decade of their life, trying to keep themselves healthy, you know, on drugs, on surgery, all of that kind of stuff. Why don't you start now? Like start now, start ahead of the curve. Don't wait until you're freaking sick. You need this money for you. You need this money for your legacy. You need this money for your family and you need this money for your culture. And you need this money for other women. It's really, really important. If your why isn't bigger than you, you can't do it. You can't achieve it. And so for me, my why is... If you are the first generation of female wealth, then you need to be the leader. You need to say, hey, I figured out my gold mine and so can you. And, you know, if you're not the type of person who would ever help people, then you're not my client, for one. And if you're not the type of person who wants everybody to do well, then you're definitely not my client. (laughs) If you're listening to this, wondering what kind of lipstick I'm wearing, this no, it doesn't work for me. I work with women who actually give a shit about how women are doing on this planet and who really want to champion places and spaces where they can take their privilege, where they can take their wealth and make sure women do well. That's the thing for me. That's what wakes me up in the morning. That's what I have trouble sleeping about at night is, you know, the, the, yeah, 
There's not a lot of words there. Maybe you guys are getting the download, but like I really deeply care about how you are doing and I know what it is that you need to do next. So you are listening to Big Fat Lies on Inspired Choices Network. My name is Jennifer Kramer Lewis, and I can't believe it. We are three quarters of the way through the show. So I'm going to invite you to join me after the break. I have a couple of invitations for you, and I'm going to share one more question that you need to ask yourself this week as we go into the frequency of the nourisher. So join me after the break. Have you ever said to yourself, I knew I shouldn't do that? How did that feel? What did you make that mean about you? Business coach, shaman and seer, Jennifer Kramer Lewis, stands for you being deliciously ambitious, passionately productive, oh so profitable, and creating a life that is truly delightful in every area. Tune in to Big Fat Lies every Friday at 1 p.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Mountain, 3 p.m. Central, and 4 p.m. Eastern on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com to open your eyes to the big fat lies that are keeping business owners from being the bright shining beacons they came here to be. This is Big Fat Lies with business coach, shaman and seer, Jennifer Kramer Lewis. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com or send a question or comment to jennifer at jennifercramerlewis.com. Oh my goodness. So can you believe it? We are three quarters of the way through the show today and we've covered so many different aspects of you are too old to get rich. (laughs) You're just too old. Oh my God. There's so many cool stories of people who you know, they got to this amazing age where they just have this divine combination of drive and wisdom and expertise. And you know that about yourself. Right now, you have the most unique combination of divine expertise, experience. You just never before in your life have you been able to actually take this on the road and use it. And before the break, I was talking about how right now, if you have privilege, because you have privilege, because you have the experience, because you have the expertise, because you have the authority, you have to run at what it is that you came here to be and do and go and fucking claim it. Claim it. Stop sitting around waiting for it to come to you. It won't. It won't. There's like one motivation. There's one set of people on this planet that will just get what they need. And God bless them. Think, you know, basically they are. They are blessed people. The rest of us have to go and fucking get it. We have to go get it. And so how you go get it, your human design is going to show you how you go get it. And, you know, it's basically like, oh, well, I have the car, I have the keys, but I don't know how to drive it. So maybe you've been thinking about that in your life. Maybe you've been like thinking like, God, I really do have a good car here. My vehicle's excellent. You know, maybe you think, oh, I'm cute. You know, I know a lot of neat things. I'm fun. People like me. (laughs) Maybe. And, you know, you're just like, okay, well, there's a few things that I really need to know about how I'm put together. I need somebody to show me how to drive the Porsche called me. And so I would say that that's one of my great roles. And I can show you that very, very quickly. So do reach out to me. I do readings, uh, which are a combination of showing you your human design charts and then a lot of intuition from me. I'm a high level psychic and channel and medium. And so future you is going to have a lot of information for you. And so we can definitely tap into future you. Your ancestors will probably have quite a bit to say. And so it will be up to you to tell me whether or not you want to hear from your ancestors, depending on what your culture is like, you may want to. And, you know, just as we move into what's next for you, 
you know, as we move into what's next for you, um, I do have an invitation I'm going to tell you about uh, next week's show. But I really want to talk to you guys about the power of joy, the power of delight, the power of being switched on and turned on in your life. And because we are women of a certain age doesn't mean that we stop putting wood on the fire that we stop taking beautiful care of our earth vehicles, you know, that we stop searching for new ways of being, new ways of being happy, new ways of being joyful. And for me, I would say, if it doesn't make me happy, if I'm not like, oh my God, it's so exciting. I've got something really delightful to look forward to, an adventure, then, you know, my inner child gets sulky. It's bored. It creates drama. <laughs> and so for me, joy is the key to making sure that I don't create drama, that I don't create an illness or, you know, don't create aches and pains in my body and don't create, you know, shitty things happening around me is joy. That's the frequency. And so, so a question that you can actually ask yourself right now is how joyful is my life? Like out of 10, how joyful is my life? And if it's not, then it's really, really up to you to run at what's joyful. Run at it. Even if you don't think you deserve it, you know, even if you like think that you have to make sure everybody else gets what they want first. <laughs> One, stop that. But also I do realize that there's a whole lot of programming out there. There's a whole lot of big fat lies talking about what it is that, you know, women do to try to make sure everybody else gets what they want first. And I'm here to tell you, you need to run at what's joyful for you. Even if it's something that's like, you don't think you can have it. It's really important that you run at it then. You know, we need to really pull apart the big fat lies that are involved in the thing that you think that would make you the most joyful, especially if you have a worthiness issue on it. Like maybe you've had a dream of going to Thailand and spending time with elephants or going to Africa and spending time with tigers or, you know, going to Japan and, you know, seeing amazing Japanese architecture and like, you know, eating beautiful food and, you know, just like, where do you want to go? What does your inner child really crave? And, you know, what is it that you're going to give yourself permission to do? What are you going to give yourself permission to do? Because nobody, seriously, guys, nobody's going to give you permission to have what it is that you deeply, deeply want other than you and me. I'm going to give you permission. But the very first person who needs to give you permission is you. You guys get that, right? And so if you have this big fat lie, which hopefully I've blown up during this episode that you're too old to have what you want that you need to like give up now then like if it makes you feel sick if it makes you feel guilty if it makes you feel angry then this isn't a big fat lie that you need to believe in there's still some life left in you you have probably 20 30 40 50 years left of your life and, you know, do you want at the end of your life to be able to have it be that your legacy is that you never took no for an answer, that you ran at what it was that you wanted? You ran at it. <laughs> Wouldn't that be awesome? I love looking at people's obituaries. Anyway, Thank you for I listening to Big Fat Lies with week. business coach, shaman and seer, Jennifer Kramer Lewis. Join us next week at 1 p.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Mountain, 3 p.m. Central, and 4 p.m. Eastern on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Until next week, Jennifer invites you to laugh at limitation and live life delightfully by opening your eyes to the Big Fat Lies.